What's going on YouTube? This is Ipsec. And today we're gonna to do something a little bit different. And that is do a cliff note version of a stream I did a couple days ago, where we created a Python application that would take a file disclosure vulnerability and use that to crawl the website. And why would you crawl a website after a file disclosure vulnerability? Because that's allowing you to extract the website source. In this case, it was a PHP app. If we just did a standard web crawler, we just get the HTML, we don't get the source code. But this will enable us to get the source code of the app so then we can easily find vulnerabilities. So this video is gonna be a cliff note of everything we did there. I'm going to shrink myself and let's go over the actual vulnerability real quick, right? Um, in the zipping box for Hack the Box, there's a file disclosure vulnerability. It's a little bit weird. The application accepts zip files and inside the zip file, there's a PDF. It only enforces the extension. It can be anything um, like any type of text. And once you upload it, it will allow you to access that file, right? So let's just walk through this real quick. I'm gonna make a directory called zip, and then let's just touch, or we can echo, please subscribe to um, test.pdf, and then we can zip package.zip here. So now we have a zip file that just contains um, test.pdf. And I think that was an unsupported command, but that should be fine. Um, apparently I don't know how to use seven zip off the top of my head. So if I upload package.zip, we go here, I'm going to curl this and we get please subscribe. It doesn't display here because the MIME type tells my browser it's a PDF. I bet if I did a dash V, uh, we can see content type there, right? So that's why my browser isn't displaying it. So the vulnerability is you can put a sim link in a zip. So let's delete everything here. And I'm going to create a symbolic link of Etsy passwd, and I'm gonna call it test.pdf. If I look at this, we have it pointed there. Now, if we do a help on zip, there's this dash Y, and that's going to store the symbolic link. So if I just zip this up, so I'm gonna do zip um, package.zip on this file. Let's make directory called out real quick. And we'll unzip it we see it didn't get the sim link. Um, the contents are my Etsy past WD. We can see IPSEC right there. Um, if we wanted to make it follow the sim link, and again, LSLA on out, LSLA here, you know it's a sim link because it's got this arrow. So I'm going to delete everything out of out. I'm gonna do that zip command again, but specify dash Y. So now if I go into out, we do the same unzip command. We see zip is telling us it processed a symbolic link. If I do a LSLA, we can see the symbolic link followed, right? So now if I upload that new package.zip, I think I put it, oh no, it's in here. And then we grab this file. We have the Etsy passwd off the server. We know it's off the server because you don't see IPSEC near the bottom. So if we wanted to extract a bunch of files this way, it's kind of a pain, right? So in the video, I had created a Python application. Uh, let me open it up. Let's do code dot to automate that. And when I created the Python application in the hack the box video, I only did it so we could download files one at a time, right? So this is the file. Um, we have the create zip. This nastiness is just how you can add a sim link in a zip. I'm sure there's a cleaner way to do it, but hey, it worked, right? So we have a way to download files one at a time. So I do Python 3 fd.py etsy passwd. It works, awesome. But this is a big pain because we have to just guess at a lot of the files, right? So if I do like ver dub 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 html index.php, we can get it. If you wanna know how I knew it was that, um, we could leak it out of like Etsy, Apache 2, sites enabled. And then the default is 000-default.conf for Apache. And that will leak where the document root is. If this was a um, production server and they were doing like um, virtual host routing, We'd probably want to get every host name out of Etsy host 
And normally the file wouldn't be 000 default. It would probably be like zipping.com, something out of that host file.com. Um, but that is ways you could get the document root, which is where your script lies. The alternative is a lot of times you can just use the proc self CWD directory, right? This will also work. So you can get proc self CWD and get the file there. That's going to be the current working directory of the current process. And in websites, normally it's gonna be the web root. So that's a really handy way of just going to the web root. Now, if I wanted to like start downloading the source code, there's a lot of files I have to download and a lot of going through. It's just going to be painful, right? Um, we'd have to go like index.php. I think um, there's upload.php. And then we'd read this source code, find a different PHP file and download that. That's It's just gonna take hours probably to download everything. So that's where having a crawler comes in handy. And I created this pwn closure on stream and we'll go over the code in a minute, but I wanna just kind of run it real quick. So let's just run it so you can see the benefit. And then we'll do like talking about the code and then end the video. So I'm gonna run pwn closure and it's just gonna start downloading everything. See, we had it crawl. It found links off index.php and starts downloading them. And if I go into the output directory, uh, we got proc self CWD. I probably shouldn't have logged all of that, but hey, we have the files. We have the entire web source of this application. At least I think I grabbed every file. So what this enables us to do is just open up Visual Studio Code on the web root. And this is going to allow us to access the application just as if we did like a git pull or something, right? We just have all the source code at our fingertips, even like all the CSS and JavaScript if we wanted it, but we could just run the application ourselves if we had um, the database up and running, right? We see the database config here, we get the MySQL password, but what's really cool when you download this is we just did the file disclosure vulnerability, we downloaded the web source, and we have the sneak plugin installed in Visual Studio. So it's gonna go and scan our code and tell us where the vulnerabilities are, right? And sneak is today's web sponsor. If you didn't know what sneak is, um, it's a platform that will scan your code, uh, dependencies, containers, all in real time to help you find and fix vulnerabilities, right? We have the open source security scanner, which isn't gonna work for this application because it's just vanilla PHP. If it was like Laravel or Python that had like requirements.txt, it would be able to scan all those um, files for vulnerabilities. You have some code quality things it's gonna point out in like jQuery, how we can fix it and make a code a little bit more readable. Always give some recommendations on how to fix it. So let's just go to the cool stuff and the vulnerabilities. If we go to product.php, there's an SQL injection right here. We can see we're doing a prepare statement, but because um, we just passed the parameter here instead of doing it in the correct way. I know I talked about it in my hack the box video for it, but I want to say we'd put a question mark and then you'd say ID like this. Um, because it wasn't done this way, it discovers it is vulnerable, right? What if I save this? So it'll automatically find that this file is no longer vulnerable. That's the one thing I really like about Sneak is once we do it, it says, oh, you fixed that function. No more vulnerabilities. Awesome. Let's go to like um, index.php. There's a file inclusion. Let's fix the path traversal vulnerability, right? So in this, it's talking about the rename functionality right here. Um, but it tells us all the lines where it became user input, right? So if we look here, 54, that is highlighted here. Um, and if we look at how it wants us to fix it, it probably wants us to use the base name functionality. So Let's go up here where we first declare a file name and I'll just say base name, put that there and it'll automatically rescan the code and we no longer see the file disclosure vulnerability, right? Or the path traversal, I called it, right? So that is um, Sneak in a nutshell. I'd highly recommend checking it out. If you haven't seen it before, go to sneak.co slash ipsec. This is a referral link. Best way to support me is going here, signing up to the platform and trying it out. I definitely do love it. I don't do sponsors here that often. So, you know, I really enjoy the product when I give it a shout out, right? So let's now um, go into how Pwn Closure works. So I'm gonna go to 
I'm trying to think of a good way. So we'll start down here. I do an import FD and then we say start crawl. And then I pass in a function to a function. This is something I don't do that often, but here where we do start crawl, we can pass in this function. And what that enables us to do is easily swap out the file disclosure vulnerability, right? This one, I had file disclosure in a zip, but a different one, I just have to create a function that will perform the file disclosure vulnerability, give the output as a text, and then I swap this function out and we're good to go. It'll start crawling, right? So I try to make this so we make as minimal changes as possible to adapt it to other web applications. If I get bored enough or there's a lot of requests, we can extend it to different um, languages. Right now it's just a PHP thing. So let's go into how this works. Um, first off, we're setting a variable. This is a set and sets are very much kind of like a list. And this is where a lot of the debugging on stream came in. The main difference here is set will not allow a duplicate. So uh, we had a lot of duplicate file downloads that we were trying to troubleshoot. At the end of the day, I just made everything a set. So duplicates couldn't be added. We declare crawled right off the start because this is recursive. We don't want to crawl the same page twice. So whenever we crawl a page, we add it to um, this set. The queue, this is gonna be all the files we want to download, right? It's gonna start off with just that one file that we specified, index.php, but then it finds links on index.php and goes and downloads them. So while we have data in our queue, we're going to take the first item off, delete it, assign it this variable. And we're gonna say we're downloading this page. Then we're going to add it to the crawled so we know we have downloaded the page. And we're going to assign the full path, and then we're gonna call the function that we passed in, that's going to be this download file function, specifying the full path, and then we're going to save it, and then after that, we're gonna call get links. If you wanna look at save, all it does is open up output on the directory, make the directory and write it, nothing fancy there. But what the next function is going to do, get links, this is going to find all the links on the page. So we're looking for something that begins with href equals, source equals, or include space. Then we're looking for a quote. And then this is going to be like our file name. We accept numbers, letters, a hyphen, a underscore, um, a slash, and a period. And we go until one of those characters doesn't match, and that's it. Um, it's going to grab the match because it's in these parentheses, right? So that is the regular expression here. It's going to add the link. And if a period isn't found, the reason why that one was there is because there was a directory um, that would just say href equals shop, I wanna say it was. Let's go to index.php uh, here. Let's just do shop. So this link, was just pointing us to the shop directory. Now, Apache automatically appended index.php for us, but because with the file disclosure vulnerability, we don't have Apache helping us out that much, so we had to specify index.php. So if there isn't a um, extension on the file, it just assumes it's a directory and goes ahead and makes index.php. So that's what that is doing. So we add the link. And then there was something slightly different. If we go to this page, this is where a um, different vulnerability lies. Let's see. If we go to the shop and click on it, we have this page variable and that's going to load product.php. So if I go to like product.php, it pulls it up. So that next regex is going to look for page equals and then the name and because we know the web service appending.php, it's going to um, do that for us. If it finds a page that doesn't have an extension, it's just going to append.php. Unlike before, where it appended slash index.php, this just does .php because we have the file name. And then we return all the links that it found. So we called get links. Now we're gonna go through each link. If we have a slash on the beginning of the link, we're just going to remove it because we don't want it. And that could create a lot of duplicates and we could go into some weird loop where we just keep getting another slash. I saw once when we like got slashed up, then we got, oh man, that's annoying. Uh, 
we'll go in, we got slash static method and it just kept going down this loop of keep doing another slash. So I just said, you know what? We're gonna kill the slashes, we'll do an L strip. Um, then we're looking for if slash is in page. And if it is, that means we were in a directory when we hit it. So that would mean we were in shop, like we're in this index.php. The page has shop slash index.php. It found functions.php. So we didn't want to just save functions.php. We wanted to save shop slash functions.php. So that's why we prepend the um, directory there. If it ends with two periods, we just continue because that was a weird case. I don't know exactly what happened there, but we never want to get to dot dots, right? Um, we could probably even do like contains dot dot or something. We don't need ends with. Um, and then we have finally, the link is not in the crawled set. Let's go ahead and add it to our queue. Um, and then I have a debug statement here if we wanted to debug it, but that is the script. So hope you guys enjoyed it. Definitely big shout out to Sneak for sponsoring this video. Take care and I will see you all next time.